just read this passage, two men were actually talking, they were uh, on the road from Jerusalem to Bemis and uh, the Bible says it's a seven miles distance from Jerusalem to Emus, it's a seven miles distance. Uh, Emus is on the uh, northwest of Jerusalem and these two men were actually talking uh, while they were on the road. We often think it's only that women talk, you know, but here we see like two men like really talking things, the current affairs of this world, what's happening uh, in and around Jerusalem during the Passover week at that time. They were discussing those things. I was thinking like we as human beings, like uh, we, we, we talk a lot, right? Only agree. Like we, we actually like talk a lot. Maybe you have not recorded your whole life or how much we really talk. Maybe in heaven God is like going to play all the things that we, we, we talk a lot, we think a lot, we say a lot. Like if I were to like cast a, an issue here like in front in this church, like, like I throw issue here and we would get like so many opinions back, right? So many feedbacks, so many views perspectives, uh, ideas will come back, like what you each one thinks, like we, we are talking, we are always like giving our thoughts, we are giving our views constantly and the same if we throw some issue in the public domain, like there is so much like people can be just giving their views and, and, and they are talking, no? And uh, I was also thinking about every day when we read the newspaper, no? Sometimes when, you know, like, you just see the, in one day you can see, like, like one brand of newspaper with so much of information, no? Uh, have you ever wondered, like, who could actually read every line? There's so much of information, like, and this information is, who's putting this, like, like human beings, like, they're expressing their views, they're expressing their opinions, and uh, the newspaper is like filled with so many pages of information and what each one thinks about every issue uh, that's happening across the globe and it's loaded with information and people are like, like talking. And then to add to this, we have so many news channels, no? There's constantly debates going on, there's panels of people coming and they're just talking. Everybody is talking. Someone said like uh, humans always uh, are, are, an in, are in an inclination to solve problems and uh, two people get together and they try to talk a lot and they try to solve problems. You know? So we are constantly like loaded with a lot of talking and, and giving our ideas and solutions. You know? There's so much voices in one sense, like the world is filled with so much voices <laughs> opinions, views, and, and, and it's, it's a vast uh, thing out there in the world. But I like what Paul said in Colossians chapter 2, 4, he says, Let no one deceive you with persuasive words. No, let no one deceive you with persuasive words. The word here, persuasive, means uh, let no one deceive you with the arguments uh, like, like a lawyer would have persuasive arguments in, in the court, right? And he's like persuasing the judge to convince his logic, no? And he's like fighting a case, he's got his arguments, his views and his logic in so persuasive way that the judge would be convinced by his logic and uh, the verdict would be in his favor, no? And Paul says, let no one deceive you with persuasive words. No? In the world there are so many voices, opinions and Paul is saying be careful, let no one deceive you with persuasive words. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus came to Caesarea of Philippi and he asked his disciples, 
what do people think I am? Like he's asking, what do people in the public domain think I am? He asked this disciple, what do people say I am? What are they talking about? Please give me some updates, Jesus said. And some of the disciples said, some say you are John the Baptist. And Jesus said, carry on. What else people say? Some say that you are Jeremiah. So okay, then who else? What else people say? Some say you are one of the prophets. Carry on. Some say you are Elijah. Says, carry on. And and people, the disciples gave all that what what people were talking about Jesus. Who do who do people think I am? But then Jesus said so beautifully, said, But what do you guys think I am? No? And then Peter said, You are Christ, the Son of the Living God. No? I like this. God isn't interested in, 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 in so much of the voices out in the world. No? What people are saying, what people are thinking, what, what what's the world thinking? But he's more interested in it's okay, I, he gets all the data from there. Yeah, people say I'm Jeremiah, I'm, I'm one of the prophets, I'm Elijah, I'm this, I'm John the Baptist. Forget about all that, put all that aside. But what do you say I am? No? And I like that. God is interested. He knows there's a lot of voices in the world. There's a lot of opinions, beliefs, everything is there in the world. But what God is interested in is put all that aside. I know that data out there. I'm interested in what is my people saying who I am. No? What do you think? What do you believe? What do you trust? What are you following? What are you agreeing upon? What are you listening? That's what matters to God. Amen? Amen. Right? That's what matters to God because this morning we are here because we are here because we love God. We know there are so many voices out there. We know there's information in the newspaper. We could just sit with the newspaper and the news channel and go to all the data there. But that's not what we want. We want to hear what God says and we want to believe what God says about every situation of life and, and, and the life to come. No? What do you say? What do you believe? Like what you believe is so important to God. How you think is so important to God. How you live your life is so important to God. How you see things is so important to God. Forget about all those voices. What do you say? What do you believe? That, that really matters to God. Because that's, that's the whole point. Like why we live on this earth. Because when I don't think or agree with God, then, then we miss the whole point of life. What do you think? No, I love that. No? And these two men, what were they doing? They were talking. They were talking on the road to Emus. Seven miles they could go on talking. No, I think even if it was 70 miles distance, they could just go on talking. And uh, they were discussing what happened that week in Jerusalem. And they were talking. And what were they talking? They were talking about what happened in Jerusalem. They were talking about Jesus of Nazareth. What happened to Jesus of Nazareth? Yes, they crucified him. Yes, they killed him. Yes, they accused him falsely. And, and they were wondering what happened to this Jesus. And they got reports that this Jesus not only was, was, was killed and crucified in the most horrible way, but he was also buried. And they, they also got reports that, that his body was not there. No? And they were talking about these things. And uh, not only they were talking about these things, but there was also uh, confusion in their hearts. No, there's, there's, there's unrest in their hearts. While they were talking, there's confusion within them. There's doubt in their hearts. Like, is it not this Jesus who said that, that he is going to be the Messiah? Is he not the one who's supposed to overthrow the Gentile nations? and set up his kingdom and reign over us. What happened to all those promises that Jesus gave us? This confusion in them, this disappointment, their dreams were shattered. Or oh, is it not that Jesus who said that he loves us, he's, going, he's come here to redeem us. He is not only going to pay for our sins, but he is also going to set up his kingdom. What happened to this Jesus? He was crucified. He is no more. 
and we hear reports that he is not in the tomb and his body is not there. There is unrest, there is doubt, their dreams were shattered and they were, they were actually trying to put all the pieces together, all the puzzle pieces together and still they are not able to figure out what happened. They are not able to come to a logical end like what happened, how could this all be? No, we can't figure this out. And they were talking seven miles on the road discussing these things. No, wait a minute, how could this happen? Did he not say he is going to come? Did he not say how could he die like that when he should be the king? How could he suffer like that when he could, he could be the one who is supposed to be the one who is going to be ruling and reigning? They couldn't understand how, how could there be suffering as well as glory? How could there be cross as well as, uh, as, well as kingship? They couldn't understand and there was, there was doubt in their lives. Have you had those moments in your life? Yes, we do have those moments of doubt. Like we, we look at our life, uh, we look at the circumstances of our life, maybe health, maybe job, uh, or maybe life just crumbles like Job's life. Everything is like, it's like a building that's like collapsing. And uh, maybe like Joseph's dreams, like it all did, like it's all collapsing. God promised him something like this. And, and the whole dreams was like, he was going down and down and down. And it's like Joseph and Job were trying to like pick up all the puzzles, the promises of God and the realities of life. And it's not, it's not like matching, the puzzle is not fixing. And there's doubt, there's confusion. Does it happen to you? It, it does happen to us and, and, it, and it did happen to many people in the Bible. Abraham's life, Abraham like, how could I be the father of many nations when I am growing old? with not even a son to call my own, like this confusion. I can't fix, I'm not able to like relate, God's promising me something, but in reality life isn't matching with God, what God promised. That's what. I, that's the confusion with these two people that were on the Emus road. They said, how could this be? He said he was the Messiah, then how could he die? He said he's going to be the king who's going to reign. How could he suffer? We're not able to correlate these two things and this confusion, Abraham's life, Moses' life, David's life, Ruth's life, all these lives, as we watch their lives, they did go through these times of doubt and disappointment and discouragement and they couldn't really figure out, uh, couldn't see like God's promises and the realities of life match, no? But I like this, while we are in confusion, while we are conversing about these things, while we are discussing things that really don't understand, I like the Bible says in verse 15 that Jesus himself drew near and went with him. Isn't that amazing? Like you are scratching your head, you are in discouragement, you are in disappointment and uh, you are like all worn out, tired, exhausted and totally worn out but then Jesus comes and the Bible says he drew near and he went with them. I like that. Right? What a companion we have, Jesus Christ. What a friend we have in Jesus. Like he's a companion, he's a friend. And we are never alone. Like he wants to be a part of our life. Like life is a journey and Christ wants to be a friend, a companion. And we are never, never ever alone. Like maybe sometimes we feel like God is not there, maybe we feel God is distant, maybe we feel God isn't answering my prayers, maybe we feel God hasn't answered my prayers the way I wanted it and we feel distant, we feel left out in those moments of confusion and, 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 and the struggles, uh, struggling moments of our life. But I like that Jesus came. He never wants us to live this Christian life alone. That's not the life Christ intended us to live. He always wants to be a vital part in our lives, right? He wants to be our friend. He wants to be there as a comforter, guide and strengthener of our souls. Like He never intended us to uh, be alone. Even in those confusion, confusion moments, He wants to be there in the details of life and in the things that really bother you. He wants to, I like that, He drew near he drew near. Never ever pray this prayer, Lord be with me. Because the scriptures have clearly said, He is already with you. Right? 
How many times the scripture says, I will never leave you, I will never leave you, I will never leave you. Maybe you feel that way. Your feeling is not what the word of God says. The word of God is superior to your feelings. Right? Don't pray like, Lord be with me. That's wrong prayer. Because Joshua was told that as I was with Moses, I will be with you. The very same verse, the writer of Hebrews claims it for all believers in Hebrews 13, 5, that he never leaves us, nor he forsakes us. In the high moments, in the low moments, in the good times, bad times, he is with us, right? He, he speaks to us. He is there in our journey. I like that. And then, and then Jesus says, what happens when you are in confusion? What happens you are in confusion? You, you, you don't know what to do. Then Jesus comes. And look at what Jesus says. He says, Oh foolish ones. Right? God speaks to us. Does He speak to us? How does He speak to us? Like, like when we are in confusion. Right? Sometimes He also says, Oh foolish ones. No, no that's, some people say, That's not the way the Lord speaks. But He says, Oh foolish ones. What more discouraging words you want to an already discouraged, confused two souls? <laughs> no foolish ones. What did God speak to you this Sunday, brother? God said, oh foolish ones. Why? Because I came to church with confusion. And my confusion was all my, my philosophy of life. I didn't really get the clarity from God. And it was all a confusion that I created for myself. And God says, oh foolish ones. Two guys discouraged and already scratching their heads. And, and then second, to add to this, he didn't even reveal his identity. The Bible says Jesus didn't disclose his identity. He just went and started conversation with them. And they didn't know that it was Jesus Christ. And, and he said, oh foolish ones. No, the word actually foolish ones means without knowledge. No, which means they didn't have complete knowledge of the events that they were discuss discussing. I mean, they saw things in the natural realm, but they didn't see from a bigger picture of what God was doing at that time. That's how we react to life, right? Oh foolish ones, God says, oh foolish ones, you've not seen things like you are handicapped with only part knowledge. Like you have knowledge, but you have only part knowledge. Maybe today, this morning, maybe you have some issue that is bothering you and God says, oh foolish ones, because you are not seeing the full picture of what I am doing in your life. You are handicapped with only part knowledge. No? And that's when I like, God comes and gives the full knowledge that I need to know in life. Right? We need the full knowledge. When you are in confusion, when you have part knowledge, what do you need? You need full knowledge. A knowledge from our Savior and Jesus Christ. He, he rebuked two things to these believers. He said, oh foolish ones. And then he said, you are slow of heart to believe. The word slow of heart to believe means you are very slow in trusting God to believe what he has promised. For example, if God has given you a, a promise, God says, trust me with those promises. Like don't be slow in believing the promises I gave you. Even when the reality of life isn't in line with what the promises God gave you, just trust His promises. Oh foolish ones, how slow are you of, slow of heart to believe, right? And, and what's the remedy when we are in confusion and when there's perplexity uh, like around you, like you don't know what life, did, did you have those moments Lord, I don't know where my life is heading. Like, we're just like walking one day at a time. I don't see any purpose in life. I'm just like going where the wind is directing me. And, and we feel that, right? We're going nowhere. No, but what's the remedy? We need God to come next to us. And He's always there. And we need to listen to what God has to say. Because we handicap with part knowledge. And we need... To hear his voice. That's what Jesus said. Oh, you are foolish ones. Come. And, and he took both of them. And they couldn't understand. How could Jesus say he would be the king? And then die. How could he be say he would be in glory? Then suffer. We couldn't correlate. And Jesus said, come. 
both the disciples come to me and Jesus did a Bible college for them. A crash course on Old Testament Pentateuch, the five books of Moses and the prophetic books. I think we should also add crash courses in our Bible college like curriculum. Like For those who are in confusion, quick healing for you is to go through, maybe you can't go through all the 36 classes of the week. We give you a quick class and then sign up for the proper Old Testament survey class. No crash course. He went through all the scriptures. It's amazing how Jesus took the Bible and he went through verse to verse, showed them all the prophecies. I love that Jesus took the Bible and he flipped the pages through and he went to them and taught them just like every Bible college teacher would teach. Sometimes we, we, we think like, is it anything, is it benefiting the people that are that are hearing our words and the messages. But I don't know, Jesus did this and we are doing this. He flipped through the pages and he explained to them all the prophets have said and he clarified them. The things that mystified the rabbis, Jesus clarified that Christ was coming two times. One as a suffering servant and the second time as a reigning king. So there's nothing confusion. There's the talks that you talk are, are of of part knowledge and you are just messing up you are inviting confusion into your own life and and that's amazing right oftentimes we bring confusion to our own lives because we don't listen to what god is saying right and uh, that's so important when 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 you have like confusion uh, like like what's happening uh, in my life why is that thing happening to that person why this person is going through a trial and, and that's amazing it's amazing to have like Jesus like it's good to to uh, to really think about things uh, Lord why am I going through this like why is that brother going through that why this problem why that problem but it's amazing I even have it's human for us to uh, to look at life with uh, like life in those in that sense but it's also important that that we bring Christ to our confusion and allow us, allow Him to open the scriptures to us and give clarity. No, in my own life, uh, there were times when uh, there was confusion. Uh, there was, there was like uh, layers. Like I couldn't see things in, in 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 the way God wanted me to see. And much of that confusion is I bring into my life, and and it's amazing. And every time things bothered in my own life, or even at times I would I would look at some other Christian's life, and I would say, God, why is that brother going through that trouble? And uh, and and I would ask the why's to God. And you can I, I don't think it's wrong to ask why God, why God, as long as uh, we are not asking in a prideful way, as long as we are not asking in an arrogant way, but but in humility. And, and in humility we can say, God, why is this happening? Like, give me insight into this. Uh, please show me what's happening. And that's that's nothing wrong because there's a pride way of asking God, God, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? That's like prideful and arrogant. And God is not uh, required to answer such questions to an arrogant person. Not, neither am I eligible to ask a big God such questions. But we can go in humility and ask God, God, Show me why this problem is happening. And, and there were times when I saw some people's lives and their problems. And during the course of my daily routine events, I would ponder on, on, on sufferings of that brother or sister. And I would also have the confusion on one end. But I would have also the Holy Spirit come and give me the answers uh, to why. That person is going through and it's amazing when God gives you that answers the confusion is gone and the clarity is come isn't it amazing that did happen to you right and, and if it's okay to ask God like what is this and remove that confusion God Jesus flipped through the pages and, and cleared all that confusion many times and oftentimes God is not hesitant to explain to us things in clarity no like he did to these two people and I personally experienced uh, like God spoke to me about things and made things clear no and oftentimes he does that but also at times God doesn't give us clarity 
and the only way we get clarity is when we meet him. In for some confusions, we don't get all the clarity. Only when we meet Jesus in heaven, face to face, we we would get the full clarity. But also, even when we don't get the clarity on earth, and uh, the clarity is only reserved in heaven, even those times, you know what God God does? He may not give us all the answers, but it's amazing that God comes and really surrounds this, surrounds ourselves. Uh, with his powerful presence, no? And in those moments of confusion, God's presence is so powerful that you can sense his presence and that becomes your strength and comfort. And you really don't need answers at that time because you can still wait for answers when you meet Jesus face to face. But that presence and comfort uh, really uh, like pushes you forward in your walk with God. I like that, right? And sometimes we, 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 are, we are ready to give, like we are, we are able to uh, give answers and clarities to everybody in the world, but sometimes there's no clarity for our own lives. Yes? Have you ever wondered Joseph? Joseph's life, like he was a dreamer, he dreamed dreams and God gave him a dream and after the dream, his life went, the dream was like, you will become this, this way, this way. But his dreams actually, his life actually fell this way, this way. And finally what happened? He was in the prison. He was a dreamer. He's got the gift of interpreting dreams. And sometimes, uh, sometimes it's like that in our lives. Like we pray for somebody else and they get healed. But our own prayers are left unanswered. Right? We get clarity for other people's problems. But our own problems, there's, there's like mist there. Did that happen to you? That's what happened in Joseph's life. I like it. Joseph is a person who interprets dreams and, and he's like so gifted, amazing guy. And then in the prison he's with the chief butler and the baker there. And, and the chief butler and the baker get the dream. And he, what does he do? He interprets their dreams. At one end he's stuck in prison with his own dreams all shattered. <laughs> and then he's, he's like interpreting the other people's dreams. He must be scratching his head, who am I? Like my own dreams have gone for a toss. I land up in this foreign land in a prison in a cell. And I am interpreting these two guys' dreams. Not only interprets their dreams, he even tells them, hey, don't, don't, don't forget me now when you go out, okay? Remember me, what a, what a way, what, what a way God works. And sometimes our, our lives are like that. We pray for others and God answers and our own prayers left. We pray, we play for clarity somewhere else's life, but we are missed in our own life. But I like that. Jesus comes near. At times he gives answers, at times he just surrounds me by his presence. And that's my strength and comfort. Right? I like that when you experience such kind of companion with Jesus Christ, you don't want to leave that. Right? That's precious. That's where Jesus told Martha, 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 Mary has chosen the best part. What she received from me will never be taken away. It's precious. You cannot measure this by the things in the world. It's so precious. You know, after the clarity, Jesus opened the scriptures to, to these two people, flipped the preachers and removed all the confusion. You know what these people say? Hey, Jesus, don't go. We reached Emus Road. Don't go. Please come. Stay with us. Like the fellowship was so amazing. The companionship was so refreshing. I said, Jesus, don't go. Why don't you stay with us? Come. Have supper. Hmm? It was wonderful talking to you. And, and it was amazing the way you... And, and even then they didn't know that it was Jesus. But something in the fellowship and the intimacy that this companionship is no natural companionship. That in this life, which is a journey, we need this companionship of Jesus Christ. And, and nobody can match this with anything else. They say, why don't you just come, let's have supper. And that night, Jesus stayed with them, broke bread. And then we know that he later revealed his identity, right? What a friend we have in Jesus. We need this, this kind of friendship. And, and Christ has not left us to live, live this Christian life 
He wants to talk to us. No, he is eager to talk to us. He wants us to engage him in the confusions and the perplexities of life. And he wants to open things to us. He wants to like reveal things to us. He doesn't want us to walk without any aim in life. But he's saying, come, I will talk to you. I will give you clarity. I will surround you with my presence. I will strengthen you. Don't walk alone in your confusion. Engage me in the journey called life. I like that. No, And it's so healing when, when Jesus talks to you in your trouble, in your wounds. Uh, it's so healing. It's so satisfying. It's like Jeremiah 2.13 says, it's like the river that satisfies me. No, When Jesus, when, my, when I receive from Jesus, when I have this fellowship with Jesus, it's like the river that refreshes me. It's a satisfying rivers of water that satisfies me. Because if I am satisfied with Jesus, I don't have to go to the world cisterns and draw water from there. Right? There are so many voices there. What did Paul say? Do not be deceived. Let not persuasive words. They look so nice, so persuasive. Maybe even come from very intelligent people. But they are persuasive words. They are deceptive words. They are like words like a lawyer trying to convince his logic. But there is lies. There are two ways Satan deceives us. By his deceptive words and by his lies. Right? Don't go there. Do not be deceived by those lies. In your confusion, in your, when you are struggling through life, that's the time Satan is looking for you. That whether you would draw from the river that satisfies you or you would go to the systems of this world, which is going to take you. He knows you are confused. He knows you are discouraged. He knows you are depressed. He is waiting to give you the, the persuasive words of this world. But they are deceptive. They are lies. And they want to take, he wants to take you off track. But receive from the waters that refreshes you. Amazing, right? And how important is the body of Christ? Like, this is so important. God speaks to us here. And speaks through godly friends also. Like last two weeks back, we had a pastor's time. And uh, it was amazing. Uh, we need body life. Uh, we also need friends, godly friends uh, with us. And, and in that pastor's meeting, I like Pastor Carl shared a beautiful devotion, short devotion in that pastor's meeting. And then I went home and shared with my wife. And uh, we both... We're so touched by what he shared. Uh, it was a beautiful... Why? Because God also speaks through Godly friends. The Christ in him speaks to me. The Christ in me speaks to him. And that's so important. I like it. He spoke about two, two things in life. He said to all the pastors, he said, uh, two things that, that keep in mind always it is like number one, uh, have a great intimacy with Jesus Christ. Number one. Don't let your intimacy be uh, robbed for anything else, right? Because there will be a time coming, one day maybe we will not be doing what we do. Our life is not going to be valued by what you do, right? We are going to grow old, but don't lose your intimacy. The second thing he said was, he said, at the end of your life, when we really leave this earth, do you really serve God's purpose? And he quoted many verses from Acts, like Paul served God's purpose. At the end of your life, like when you're buried, when people see your life, and, and even when God looks at your life, so and so serve God's purpose for your life. Right? Isn't that amazing? And, and, and that's, that's like, we need the body of Christ. And we need friends in the body. We need one another's life. Nobody is too big. Nobody is too small. There is no unimportant member in the body of Christ. Right? There's all members are important. And the Christ in you speaks to me. Christ in me speaks to you. And, and, and that's one of the channels God also speaks to us. He refreshes, refreshes us with those con uh, conversations. And when there's confusion, don't draw the persuasive words in the world, but draw water from Jeremiah 2.13 that refreshes us. 
You know what the temple guards said when they heard the words of Jesus? They were sent to arrest Jesus. This is what the temple guards said. John chapter 4, 7 verse 46. They said, no man ever spoke like this man. Isn't that amazing? Right? In our confusions, when we go to him, we come out, wow, this is amazing. I have never seen things this way. No man spoke like this man. Right? And when we leave the church this morning, just go nodding your heads. I know there are a lot of people down. And what happened inside? Oh, those were eternal words. Where can we go? For you have the words of life. Right? Keep nodding your head. What happened inside? There was a man who spoke. That was Jesus Christ. And no man ever spoke like this man. Right? And when we listen to Jesus on all the doubts and confusions of life, the Bible says, that kind of life is like the shining sun. No, it's like the shining sun that shines brighter and brighter unto perfect day. It doesn't go dim. It's like shining brighter and brighter. Have you seen a shining sun? Early morning east, it shines brighter. And, and that's how when we have this engagement with Jesus Christ, uh, we have troubles, we have confusions, we have perplexities. But when Christ gives clarity, we move on and life becomes beautiful. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, God. Bless these words to us. Thank you.
is as a, as a kid, all the first is your song, is all grumpy, is cranky, and you know, be able to look the child. We have been like the song. Is the first, is the scars, is like the of
is a one. I want to say to you, be faithful, 
and be fruitful in every season of your life. Girls, you're not born alone. <coughs> I just, I just tell you a few things of your life and God will, will show you.